Hi and welcome back to Garden Ninja for the May tour. Now spring is here, the garden is bursting into life and there's absolutely loads to show you along with a bit of news. So come on, let's get cracking. So I have a bit of a big update and I've been forced to keep it secret for the past year but I can now officially announce that I'm one of the new designer presenters on BBC One's Garden Rescue and my first episode comes out this week the 28th of May at 3.45 in the afternoon and it's been such an exciting project to work on. Now I was asked about 18 months ago and then I started to draw up designs for the different shows and we filmed them last year but because they're filmed a year in advance I've not been able to tell anyone up until now so it's been a really exciting project and hopefully I can sneak in a bit of the garden ninja can do get up and go into the BBC and encourage some new gardeners to get out there and make the gardens awesome. Now I'm already filming this year, ready for next year, and my schedule's gone a bit bonkers. It's really, really busy. And people have asked me, will you still carry on doing a YouTube channel? And the answer is a resounding yes, of course I will. But I could do with your help. Please let me know below if you've got problems in the garden or garden design questions, because that helps inspire me to provide content to help you. So let me know below. But I'm not going anywhere, and I'm going to try and push out as much content as I can to help you make your gardens awesome. Now let's have a look around the garden and see what's been going on in the month of May. So here we are over in the mini orchard. Now last year I gave you a demonstration as to how to pre fruit trees to make sure that you get more fruit and less disease and damage. And this is a good example because as you can see, even now the tree is in leaf, I can still get my hands pretty much through all the way without hitting a branch, meaning that as these beautiful blossoms get pollinated and fruit appears, they're going to be evenly spaced. They're not going to be congested or rubbing against each other, which is a big problem with fruit trees, because if you don't prune them, they tend to just grow in a bit of a tangled mess. You may also remember that I advised against pruning any of the plum family in winter because they can suffer from silverleaf disease. Now is the prime time to prune your prunus or your plum families and just give them a light tidy up. So if there's crossing branches on your plum trees, nip out the weaker of the two and open that up and that'll give them enough time to heal before they start to put on the fruit later in the year. So have a look here in this plum tree, what would those be? Maybe some little tiny baby fruits. How exciting. Now I think this is one of my favorite views at the moment in the garden. I'm in the very center of the exploding atom garden. And if you followed my guides a few years ago, you'll know that all of this pretty much was grown from seed. And what's beautiful is you can start to see them really bulk up and fill out the borders. And part of this vista that I really like is the different pops of colour. You know, we've got the moody goth border at the back that's coming to life again. And all of this is going to be red hot in the middle of summer. But what's interesting is, you may see in the background there, there's a purple aquilegia. Now, I never planted that, so it's come from somewhere. But Mother Nature's kind of helped me out because that then connects the purple bed with this hot colour bed and the colours pop off each other. So maybe it's a sign, who knows, but I'm going to leave it there because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So take a look down here at this. Now, if you look closely, you'll recognise this as a geranium. This is also known as Herb Robert. And in the UK, hello Barry, it's often classed as a weed, which I think is really unfortunate because it's a beautiful plant. Now, it's self-seeded here from somewhere. I don't know where, but I'm going to leave it because I really like it. And that brings me on to an important point about weeds, is that we're often very quick to remove from our gardens what we haven't introduced. However, Mother Nature is on call, and if things want to self-seed and fill gaps, I have no problem with it. So unless something's really in the way, I tend to leave things. And I might show you a few more examples of where things have popped up that maybe I wouldn't have planned. However, they look fantastic. Now 
Now these here are Valerians and they're a herbaceous perennial. They grow really tall and they get this huge pink flower that then turns white. Um, they are a bit of a marmite plant because they've got a really strong scent of soap and when you're walking around the garden you can smell them from a mile off. I introduced a few to the pink borders to give it a bit of bulk. What I didn't realise is with a valerian they're a prolific self-seeder and they're popping up everywhere and at first I thought oh I need to thin them out. However they've kind of colonised around here in the hotbed and what I realised is these will bring the early season colour because they're going to flower in about another three weeks whereas everything else only flowers in summer. So it's a really good classic example of Mother Nature succession planting herself. Now succession planting is when you plan a bed, as I try to do, where you'll have things that flower at different periods of the year. And if you do it correctly, case in point, then every week of the year you can pretty much have something that's doing its thing, that's providing interest in the garden. So when you're planning your borders, bear in mind that if you plan for things all to flower in the same month, then the other 11 months of the year it might look a bit glib. So if you succession plant and mix your plants up so that you've got different plants flowering at different times, then you can extend the season and get more out of your garden. See you soon! Now it's time for the exciting part, we're going to check in on the wildflower meadow to see what's been going on since last month's update. So come on, let's take a nosy. So as you can see, there are plenty of buttercups that have risen up showing the little cherry faces, which obviously I don't mind, it's a wildflower meadow. But down here, the Jacob's Ladder that we discussed last month is now in flower and it's incredible. So it's bright blue and it's got this contrasted yellow that pops off in the flower. And you'll be able to see a few in the distance over there. Now, the thing with the wildflower meadow is it's easy to expect it all to come up, oh sorry Barry, at the same time and look amazing all year round. But for your first year it's not going to because things need time to establish. So I'm trying to be patient thinking about the 800 odd plants that are in here. Now I know that they're not all going to take we had a really difficult wet winter, the chances of them all surviving is you know relatively low, also with the competition from the grass. So you need to hedge your bets, but with any new project, give yourself time and be patient because you'll be amazed at how well Mother Nature does if you just give her a little bit of patience. So beside me here is one of the viburnums, also known as the gilderose, and this is one of our native shrubs. And you can see all these new shoots are popping up this year, and it only went in last year, so I'm quite impressed that it's put on so much growth. Behind me again, you can see the Jacob's Ladder. We've also got the Inula Helenium, the El Campaign behind us, that's popping up, and they're gonna have that late season bright yellow flower. So I'm quite confident with the wildflower meadow. There's enough stuff showing already. I know there's plenty more hidden in here that's gonna pop up. So it's just about having patience, which sometimes I struggle with, but I need to keep bearing in mind, this is a new project and it's gonna evolve over time. Now, time for a bit of bad news. I planted three of these multi-stem birch when I first started the garden. The two at the front are doing incredibly well, but this one, I'm pretty sure is dead. I'm not sure why, because it's had the same amount of attention, the soil is good quality, I've mulched the ground, um, but for some reason it's just not come back to leaf. Uh, I think it is dead, however, I'm going to leave it to the end of the season, because you never know, it might for some unknown reason suddenly come back from the dead. The other thing is, if I was to remove this now and then try and plant another tree, I'm kind of limited because I can only use container grown trees that are in leaf. And the problem with those is that they're expensive and it also means I'm going to have to give it loads of water and maintenance to keep it going because it won't be established. So I'm going to leave this and if it is dead then I'll know by September because there'll be no growth on it. I'm then going to lift it in the winter and use a bare root tree to take its place. And I think I might mix it up. I'm kind of tempted by Prudus sorella, but we'll see. Maybe a birch, it may be a prunus. But I'm going to leave it here for now, and it's kind of skeletal shadow of its former self, but it still gives a little bit of interest and structure. Now, another thing that I need to do this month is to remove these tree stakes. 
planted these about two years ago now. They're well and truly established. And the stake really is only there to hold it in position whilst the tree or say shrubs roots establish. If I leave it on, what happens is it's just gonna restrict it. I keep having to loosen the bands so that they don't rub and cause friction. But it's really unnecessary. So I'm gonna take them out now. And hopefully, if they've not rotted too much, I'll be able to reuse them. But if I can't reuse them, I will cut them up and use them as either firewood or for a different project, maybe a smaller stake. But now is a perfect time in spring to get rid. Being careful not to rub the tree too much and aggravate it. So that goes off. And then my top tip for these is just to twist them. It's like a twist and pull. What I don't like doing is waggling them because what you can then do is start to disturb the roots and cause all sorts of bother. So what I usually do is just do my best, just give it a bit of a wiggle to loosen it off and then just pull it out. Now just to show you that it's not always plain sailing at Garden Ninja HQ, look at that. So I've just tried to spin this one out with the same technique and it's just snapped and twisted off. Now, I'm not gonna bother trying to excavate the remaining part of the stake because I'll do more harm than good to the tree. But I can still reuse this. I could cut that off and make a mini stake or cut it into chunks and use it as firewood. But either way, you can recycle these. So a number of you online have been asking, are gardens behind this year? As in, are they late? And I've experienced it this year where things certainly seem to be a good couple of weeks behind where they were last year. And this Gladitzia is a case in point. Now usually this is in full leaf by now and I'll do a close up, but as you can see, it's only just starting to break. And at first I was a bit concerned thinking, oh, what's happened, are they a bit sick? But I think due to the weird weather patterns we've had, the really cold wet winter a lot of things are struggling to get established and I've lost a few herbaceous plants as well like I showed you last month because of those conditions but it is about hope and a bit of faith so if you've planted things correctly and you've watered them so they've established always give them a bit more time before you go ripping them out and I think this tree in another couple of weeks will be in full leaf. Now, if you remember a few months ago, I did a pruning guide for gooseberries and I pruned this one behind me. Now, it was years old. I've never seen this much foliage on it since I've moved in, which is about four years ago. But I'm gonna do a close up because we've already got fruit on it. We didn't get any last year. So that kind of proves the point about hard pruning and renovating old fruit bushes. So if you've got some old gooseberries, black currants, blackberries, and they're just not really doing much, check out that guide. I'll put a link in the video here but check that out and then next winter if you do a hard prune you can renovate them and then they'll look like this. So take a look at what a difference a month makes. Last month I was here planting out hyacinth bulbs and today I'm sat here, there's geums out in flower, geraniums, all the grasses are going nuts. The salvia caradonna is showing their heads. There's just loads of interest and it brings me on to an important point in that it's not just the weather and the sun and the moisture that has meant that this bed is far more advanced than the other parts of the garden. It's because it's a raised bed. And what that means is that the bed has been lifted off the ground, so it's raised. The importance of that is that it heats up really quickly in the spring. So this bed, when I put my fingers into the soil, feels a lot warmer than the rest of the garden. And that helps bring on plants a lot quicker as well. And it kind of means that you can grow things sooner, which is why raised beds are usually used for things like vegetable growing. But in this case, I've used it as a design feature to elevate the planting from the rest of the granite garden and also bring it on a bit sooner. It also lasts longer into the season. The caradonnas there stay in flower till about late October, November, whereas in the exploding atom garden, by the end of September, they've kind of done their thing. So if you are designing your own gardens and you're considering ways to extend the season, a bit like succession planting, then raised beds are a really good idea to be able to achieve that. So that brings us neatly to the end of the May garden tour. If you've liked this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can find loads more garden design, hints, tips and hacks. 
If you're watching Garden Rescue, make sure you comment below and let me know what you think of the show. I've been Garden Ninja, happy gardening. <laughs>